states never join the League of Nations. Wilson's vision of getting the United States fully involved in global affairs is going to end in failure. And in 1920, Warren G. Harding was elected president. And Warren G. Harding campaigned on a platform of a return to normalcy, whatever that means. I've heard debate as to whether that's even a word, but I'm guessing it is. Normalcy. Let's maybe take a step back from all of this progressivism, all of this internationalism. Let's think about America. All right, so we see this poster uh, from Harding's campaign, America First. And when Harding was campaigning, he said, call it the selfishness of nationality, if you will. I think it's an inspiration to patriotic devotion to safeguard America first, to stabilize America first, to prosper America first, to think of America first. Yeah. America! Okay, love this country. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get caught up in a patriotic fervor. Excuse me. Now, although we're putting America first, we have to address a myth, okay? And there's a myth that the United States, after World War I, just totally pulled back and had absolutely nothing to do with global affairs and cared nothing about what was happening in the world that could not be more false. No more of those European wars. But if we can get involved and promote peace and understanding, we're all about that in the 1920s. And there are three things that we do that illustrate this point. First of all, the Washington Naval Conference. Second, the Dawes Plan. And third, the Kellogg-Briand Pact. Now, the Washington Naval Conference was a conference between the United States and several other world powers talking about how to lower the size of our navies. Remember, one of the 14 points was the reduction of arms. So here's the United States in the 1920s not just going to Europe to some conference, but hosting a disarmament conference, exercising leadership. So we are totally on board with being world leaders when it comes to peace. And we came up with some ratios, okay? So for every five ships Britain gets, the United States gets five, Japan gets three, the French get some, but who cares how many? And everybody leaves happy, okay, that we just make it so we're not getting in some kind of arms race and reigniting another war. So note the Washington Naval Conference. You come to us and let's talk about ways that we can promote peace and understanding in the world. The USS South Carolina was dismantled during this time. I mean, we're actually taking ships that our tax dollars built and we are taking them apart. Because after all, we're pretty much done with war now, right? People call World War I the war to end all wars. Then there's the Dawes Plan. Now remember, after World War I, Britain and France said, Germany, you owe us some money. You gotta pay some reparations. Now, Britain and France also owed some money to us. And so the United States comes up with this plan where Germany can get loans from the United States. Okay, so we loan Germany some money and Germany it pays their reparations but can keep a little money for themselves. And then Britain and France turn around and take that money and they give it back to us. And so really we've got this money going through this triangular pattern almost like some sort of money laundering operation, but everybody leaves the table happy. We get to help out Germany, Germany gets to pay their reparations, and Britain and France are able to pay us our war debts that they owe us. Other countries used to owe us money. It wasn't always like today where we owe everybody else money. And people were pretty impressed by the Dawes plan. Nobel Peace Prize, 1925. Yay, America. And then finally, there was the Kellogg-Briand Pact, which renounced war as an instrument of national policy. Next joke, please. Now, 
as we head toward the 1930s, we are moving from promoting peace and understanding to re-emphasize our commitment to non-intervention that we do not want to intervene in other nations' business. Just like we don't want them intervening in ours. So stay away from America, America will stay away from you. Except to be friends, we'll do friendly stuff. But you know, all that imperialism, all that war and all that, that's over. Okay, and we even let Latin America know that. In the late 20s and uh, early 30s, we're moving into a new relationship with Latin America, what we call the good neighbor policy. And so this is a policy of non-intervention in Latin America only to help. And we are renouncing the imperialism of the past with this good neighbor policy that we don't want to intervene in Latin America unless you want us to, unless it's friendly. And when it comes to Europe, we don't want to get involved in another European war. During World War I, we were selling armaments to the British and the French. We weren't taking their side, we were just taking their money. We don't even want to do that. That drew us into the war, and so Congress in the 1930s passes the Neutrality Acts, which sets us on a policy of not giving aid to belligerents, people who are at war. So with this, the United States says we've got a role to play in the world, but we do not have a role to play in getting involved in foreign wars. TomRitchie.net, see you there.